So thank you very much. So the work I'm presenting today is uh, joint work with my two PhD supervisors, Emmanuel Scherzer and Amory Lambert. Who, um, and together we work in uh, the LPMA in Paris. Uh, and um, we also have an um, interdisciplinary team, which is called SMILE, for Stochastic Models for the Inference of Life Evolution, uh, where we work together with uh, biologists. And uh, the work I'm going to present today was um, inspired by the following uh, experiment, which was carried by Enrique de Otonio at uh, ONS. So uh, he studies Cenorabditis elegans, which are small transparent worms. And uh, we start with a population of uh, 180 individuals, which are sampled from distinct populations. So here, each line represents the chromosome of uh, one individual and uh, they are all uh, distinct, so that's why I paint them in different colors. And uh, he let the population evolve for uh, some generations and uh, after some amount of time, the chromosomes of the individuals look like this. They are mosaics of colors because each fragment of chromosome has been inherited from uh, one of the ancestors in generation zero. And, um, after uh, 140 generations, he genotyped all the individuals in the population. So here, each horizontal line, this is real data. Each er horizontal line corresponds to one individual. And uh, it's the chromosome. And each color represents uh, one ancestor. And uh, so we want to study this mosaic of colors, because uh, it may be informative about, uh, for example, if uh, some colors are more present than others. This, this may mean that uh, some individual in the generation, generation zero was fitter than the others and had more uh, progeny. So to study this mosaic of colors, we are going to use a model. So the question I'm going to ask, so if uh, this is one chromosome, I call a segment a maximal set of connected uh, points which share the same color. So for example, this is one segment. And they call a cluster a uh, set of points sharing the same color. For example, the blue cluster is here. And uh, the kind of questions I want to ask is what is the size, size of a typical segment? And what is the length or the diameter of a typical cluster? And how many segments of clusters are there in a given interval? So the model I use is an applied right Fisher model with recombination. So I assume I have a population of cons constant size n, and each individual carries one chromosome of size r. And um, I, my population follows a right Fisher dynamics, which means that I have a discrete time dynamics, and at each generation t, uh, each individual choose, chooses two parents in the previous generation, and then two things can happen. So with a probability one minus rho, the um, the individual copies exactly the chromosome of one of its parents. This is what, what happens here. And with the probability rho here, the individual will inherit a chromosome that is a mixture between the two parental chromosomes. So the two parental chromosomes are cut at a, what I call a crossing over point, uh, whose position is uh, randomly located uh, along the chromosome, and he will inherit half the uh, half of the genetic material of the father and half of the mother. So this is the picture of what happens in the population. So I start with n individuals, which are pairwise distinct. Each one has a chromosome painted in a unique color. In generation two, individuals may have two colors or only one. And after a lot of generations, my chromosomes look like mosaic of colors. And what I know about this model is that as I have a fixed population size and my population is finite, uh, the model will reach fixation, which means that after a finite number of generations, all the chromosomes in my population will look the same, because it's the only uh, observing state for my Markov chain. And I want to characterize this mosaic of colors. So I will... Uh, Consider, I will define a process at a p on 
and R, which is the partitioning process, which corresponds to the color partition of the system at equilibrium for a population of size N with chromosomes of size R. And um, then I will t uh, make my population size tend to infinity, and my probability, and I will make my probability of recombination rho dependent on n and r. And I assume that as n goes to infinity, n times rho converge, converges to r. So I make my probability of recombination depend on the population size. So then, what I say is that as n tends to infinity my process converges to a process pi of r in, in low, which I call the r partitioning process. And uh, my question is, what can I say about this process when r is large, right, which means for a large chromosome? Uh, so uh, I will justify this, uh, this limit by the fact that I know that r for humans is quite large. It's, uh, for example, for uh, a human chromosome, the, the size r is uh, five times, is, uh, five times uh, 10 to the power 4. So it's the size uh, of the chromosome renormalized by the effective population size. So I want to, the first uh, result I want to prove is the following theorem. So I will look at, at the color clusters that uh, covers the origin of the chromosome. So here it would be the one that I colored in red. And I call uh, L of R the length of this cluster. And uh, I renormalize L of R by log of R. And they say that uh, as R tends to infinity, uh, this quantity converges in law to an exponential of parameter 1. So the idea that the, um, to prove this theorem is that I, I'm going to use a process that is dual to my original process. In fact, what I will do is um, to use the ancestral recombination graph. So I will uh, choose uh, two sites in uh, my chromosome. So if uh, this was my chromosome at origin, I choose two sides, it's an X and Y. And I will follow my population backwards in time. So here each line represents the ancestral line for uh, one of these sites, which corresponds to the individual in the past population that uh, is the ancestor for that given gene. Okay? So here I choose one individual at random in my population and I will follow which parent was carrying locus X and locus Y and uh, I will see if this is my initial population to which color do they arrive. So if they arrive to the same individual here, if both lineages arrive to the same individual here, that means that in the partition in the present population these two uh, points will be of the same color and if as here they reach different individuals in population at time zero, that would mean that one of the of my locus will be colored in green and the other in blue. So here for two um, for two locus, I will follow two ancestral lines and uh, so they start together and the, the two lines will split into two with a probability that is uh, L over N, well, L, L is the distance between uh, X and Y. And uh, uh, both ancestral lineages will coalesce with a probability that is 1 over N, which corresponds to the probability that in this generation, this individual and this individual have a common ancestor. Mm. So what I claim is that this process called the ancestral recombination graph is dual to my uh, initial process. Why? Because so uh, if here you have a, uh, my uh, ancestral recombination graph represented for my whole chromosome, 
and I follow backwards in time the lineages that carry each of my genes. Uh, it will look like this, where uh, red dots correspond to um, <coughs> fragmentation events and the blue dots correspond to uh, coalescent events. And what happens is, is, is that here I have uh, my uh, partitioning process, process that is represented. The probability that the two points are uh, in the same uh, cluster corresponds to the probability that two points uh, reach the same ancestor in my uh, ancestral recombination graph. Uh, so what I need is to define my ancestral recombination graph. I, I show you how it behaves for uh, two particles, but I need to define it for n particles. So for n particles, we have a coalescent fragmentation process, which is a process valued in the set of partitions of uh, zero n with the following uh, transition rates. So uh, each group of lineages coalesces at rate one and I have fragmentation at uh, this rate. So if I have uh, some particles that are uh, located here, uh, the probability that I, a fragmentation event occurs here uh, depend on the distance between these two points. And I show that there's a duality relation, which means that the probability uh, for my partitioning process that n uh, sites in my chromosome are, uh, belong to the same cluster in the color partition corresponds to the probability that my ancestral lineages uh, are together uh, for my ancestral recombination graph. Uh, so then to prove the theorem I wanted to prove, what I will use is a method of moments. So I will use a Carleman condition, uh, which says that uh, it, it is enough to prove that uh, for all n, uh, I have uh, the expectation of uh, Lr uh, the power n renormalized by log r to the power n is this, which is a moment for the exponential law. And what I do is that uh, I will uh, rewrite this expectation like this. So uh, the idea is that I want to look at the points that are in the same color partition as zero. So I want to integrate between zero and r the indicative function that a point is of the same color at the, the point in zero. And as this is at the power n, and I can rewrite it, just rewrite it like this. So it corresponds to the probability that n particles, n sites in the chromosome are of the same color as uh, site zero. And uh, using my duality relation, uh, this is the probability that n lines in my ancestral recombination graph are together. So then I need to study this uh, coalescent, coalescent fragmentation process. So the thing is that um, the ARG is known to be uh, computationally intractable. And so this is uh, impossible to compute. Uh, exactly, but I use the fact that as r goes to infinity, my fragmentation probability is much higher than my coalescence probability. So if I start with uh, lines that are separated, for example, I will show you an example with uh, three. If I start with uh, three lines that are separate, this will coalesce at rate one into this, and uh, this will be fragmented at um, with the probability that is proportional to r, etc. And to reach the state that I want, which is this one. 
I need to coalesce again. And still this will recombine at this rate. So what I show is that this state is the most likely configuration and has a probability that, that uh, goes to 1 as r goes to infinity. And um, uh, configurations that are um, at one coalescence event distance from uh, this configuration have a probability that is of order 1 over r. And this one has a probability that is of order 1 over r squared. And using this approximation, I can uh, replace it here. And, uh, and I found what I wanted, so I found that this converges to factorial n. So um, the perspective, so um, uh, I have other results that allow me to characterize the law of a cluster uh, that is conditioned to be at any point uh, x of the chromosome and also about the number of uh, color cl clusters, clusters in my chromosome. And um, what we want to do with this is to work on a neutrality test based on haplotypes. So that would mean that once I can totally characterize this mosaic of colors, uh, I can compare my prediction to the real data. And uh, if the real data fit my prediction, that would mean that the, the, the evolution was neutral, as described in my model. But if at, uh, some, for some part of the chromosome this hypothesis is violated, for example, if one loci is selected, uh, I expect that uh, then the I would have a color clusters that are larger or smaller than predicted. And uh, so that could be like a test for uh, selection, which doesn't need to have mutation. So that can work for populations that evolve, uh, for um, populations that have a, a short uh, time. And uh, that's all. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. So uh, thanks, Veronica, and um, so Henri. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not this time. So I didn't understand. Is the first um, cluster is it special, or it's um, not that it's special? It's that I could do it. <coughs> I could do this for any x here, mm -hmm. but. Uh, so I think that is so this so one all is clusters it's are somehow typically special because you only have uh, this point has only right neighbors. Yes. Okay. But uh, I need yeah, so the thing is that to compute this, I need to choose one point and then I integrate over its neighbors. But I've sh uh, I didn't show it here, but I can take any point here and just I will. Uh, what I show if I, it's that if I take the cluster that is in any point x, then uh, the length of uh, of the cluster in in this segment is also an exponential, and in in the left segment it's also an exponential, and at the limit for large r they become independent, so uh, it follows a gamma law. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's somehow so, 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 so the number of clusters is of order n over log n, and the number of uh, so sorry r, r over log r, yeah, and uh, and this uh, Poisson process with the constant intensity. Uh, it's not that easy because the thing is that the number of clusters is the constancy times r over log r, mm -hmm. and the constant is is not one; it's like one point three. And this uh, way was found using simulations in, uh, I think, 1970, uh, 1997 or something like that by uh, Ryu van Heim. And um, they just show, it, show that numerically. And what we think is that, um, so here when we're doing that, our clusters are size biased because I conditioned them to be at a certain point. 
and we think that there are also a certain amount of uh, very really small clusters, kind of a dust, mm -hmm. and that makes that the number of clusters is larger than uh, our over logo. <laughs> is there any other questions? Well, if not, I, I have a question. So uh, what uh, uh, made you to make this choice of model? It, does it compare well with the real data? Or? Uh, so in fact, no. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the thing is that uh, we have so, some, um, we know some biologists at the INRA who were trying to work in, in this type of model uh, because they wanted to do a uh, so they wanted to do selection tests and uh, without mutation, so the, the thing I, I mentioned. And um, so we started working on them, be working with them. So they had some simulations, and they there were things that they could not explain. So we started working uh, about that, and then we met that guy at Tunis who had uh, experimental data, who were just fitting uh, our model. But um, the thing is that uh, in the in the experimental data he gave us, um, so the experiment the it's not uh, at the time where it fits our model because as I said in my model I uh, wait until my population reaches fixation so that each individual is exactly the same and here you see that each individual is still different so we still have to to wait a little bit till we can compare our data to his experiments. Okay, thank you. Uh, just Sorry. a quick question, what is Cainoraptitis? So yeah. there are small worms that are transparent and that have only a thousand cells or something like that, so they reproduce quite fast. They are the animal of choice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people use them a lot in genetics because they don't have many cells and they develop very quickly and they are transparent. So that's nice for biologists for experiments. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Oh.